Hello there, Ray here, and in today's video, I will be showing you guys 31 cool uses for powder snow that I discovered over the last 11 months of testing this. This will include the useful to the downright bizarre. Powder snow was first mentioned in the Minecon event where it was called snowier snow. You might think that the best way to get it is by having snowflakes fall into a cauldron and then once filled up, scoop it up with a bucket. But it can also be found naturally in the two 1.18 new biomes groves as well as snowy slopes. But using my nifty farm, you can actually get this stuff automatically. There's no good tool to remove it and using silk touch won't get you anything. But luckily this stuff can be easily broken with your fists and that is a good thing because if you fall into it you can't actually jump out of it. It will slowly freeze your character. Once you're frozen you're going to start taking damage. So breaking your way out of it is a must. Slowly freezing to death it might be bad but it's a lot worse for mobs like blazes, striders as well as magma cubes who die extremely quick. Although most mobs will take damage, mobs like strays as well as snow golems never will. And mobs like polar bears can actually even spawn inside of this stuff. Anybody needing a polar bear farm? The false floor like property of powder snow affects most entities. But a few small critters like endermites, silverfish, fox, as well as both variations and even rabbits can avoid this by not falling through and able to walk right on top. But if they walk in from the sides, they will suffer the same fate. Vex may be immune to lava, but they are no match against powder snow. Shulkers can stand the blaze of fire, but the freeze of powder snow they cannot. Despite lava in a cauldron being able to burn the player, powder snow in a cauldron does no damage. But if you happen to catch on fire in survival, you can use a cauldron of powder snow to put it out, where it converts the powder snow into water and then removes one layer of it. This can also be done with a block of it, but it will be destroyed. Their extinguishing ability also applies to other stuff like fire charges and even flame bows. Shooting a flame arrow to the top of that stack of powder snow completely obliterates it but shooting the arrow very quickly can make it leave patches behind. The arrow itself is supposed to also extinguish as it goes through, but it doesn't always work. But if you come in and place powder snow directly onto it, it will extinguish it. But despite it being extinguished by flame entities, it doesn't melt with light or heat. It might not burn up, but it can wash away. But that's no problem if you're using it to trick mobs to walk over it or trying to walk through it. Wearing leather boots can prevent you from falling through the powder snow and lets you walk on top. This works for anything wearing leather boots, armor stands, zombies, and you can even put boots onto villagers, and it works. But falling farther will let you sink in. With your leather boots, you can climb up it as well as go down it, just like you would a scaffolding. Horses wearing leather armor will still fall through, but wearing any piece of leather armor will prevent you from freezing. So horses wearing theirs will not freeze. But if you ride a horse that is above the powder snow, you will actually freeze despite you not touching it, which is extremely strange. Despite it seeming very similar to cobwebs where items will sink through it fairly slow, you can't place things like paintings, signs, or even item frames onto the stuff. And despite falling blocks easily being able to go through cobwebs, they are not able to go through powder snow. But unlike cobweb which will break nearby cactus, powder snow will actually sit there just fine. But like cobwebs, you can place powder snow directly inside of yourself, making MLG snow bucket a thing for the nether. Walking through powder snow is quite slow, but if you put it over top of blue ice, it is even slower yet. Despite being able to walk through it, it actually diffuses the light, meaning that it will let the light through, but will have it be reduced. Mobs that are inside of powder snow will not take any sunlight damage like the skeleton. Skeletons left in the snow will convert into strays. Using this, you can make some impossible mobs, which normally never spawn into Minecraft, such as having a stray riding a spider. Remember to like and hit that bell after subscribing which ends up looking really cool. If you get one of these horsemen from a lightning storm, you could also do this to them, getting a mob that used to be discontinued, but now is a renewable mob. If you do this to a skeleton horse, they will actually freeze to death. Although snowfall slowly adds layers into the cauldron until it's full, and different layers can be read with comparators with different outputs, there's no way for the player to make these other layers. So this all becomes pretty useless. Unfortunately, you can't use dispensers with empty buckets and cauldrons, otherwise you could automate the process a bit more. But you can place it out as a block and then scoop it back in again. Its redstone features are pretty limited, 
but you can push it using piston. Most projectiles are not affected by the slowness of the powder snow, but there is actually one thing that is affected and that is fishing rods. Once they hit it, they kind of like just get stuck inside of it and then slowly make their way down to the bottom of it. Despite it seeming like normal snow, you can't make a snow golem out of it. But just like a layer of snow, it will convert the top of grass into a snowy grass. But one way not to get fooled by this trapping block is to pay attention if there is snow layers on top of it or not. As snow layers can be placed over top of normal snow but not powder snow. Normally looking into the stuff can be quite confusing, but in spectator mode it is very easy. Using this command you can place the bucket on top of your head as if you're trying to balance it there. If you enjoyed learning about secrets of Minecraft, check out this playlist. If you'd like to see more tips and tricks that I came across while playing the game for 12 years, check out this playlist. As always, I'd like to thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye!